they keep getting better and better. Thanks so much for that beautiful rendition. Passage of scripture, John 5 verses 1 through 9. This is an interesting passage because it talks about an encounter with a man who has been stricken at a pool that is a pool that is known for its healing virtues. The interesting thing about this narrative and the interesting thing about the pool of Bethesda, healing was good for one person. The first person to get in the water is the individual that gets healed. Nobody else. One person. So you can imagine what it is like when it is time for the water to be troubled and folk are there wanting to be healed. And our scripture this morning kinds of, kind of sets up the plight of this poor person who is looking for healing at the pool of Bethesda. The man in our text today is representative of many people. He is characterized in the language of the King James Version of the Bible as having an infirmity. The New International Version simply states that he was an impotent man. Now, the word impotent has had an evolution of meanings. And the word means lacking in power, lacking in strength, lacking in vigor. In some applications of the word, it even means being helpless or suffering from a disease. The contemporary English version simply says the man was sick. And with this definition, this man is therefore representative of all who are presently in need of healing. But God heals the total spectrum of humanity. Even if you are not physically sound, you may be suffering from a broken heart, mental anxiety, or you can just be downright frustrated. Anybody ever been there? <laughs> God says in Isaiah that he feels the stroke of their wounds. God not only heals that, but he also heals relationships. And many times there are breaches that need to be healed in our lives. Can you say amen? You don't have to be mad and fighting to have a bad relationship. 
many married couples that sleep in the same bed can't hold a conversation. Many who sit on the same pew with each other can't stand each other. Our closing hymn is <laughs> I think I'd better leave that alone. of Bethesda. This man who is in need of healing is said to be at the pool of Bethesda. He's at the place where healing is to be expected. The name Bethesda itself means house of mercy, house of grace. And when you consider the name Bethesda, you can very well compare it to the church. A place of mercy, a place of grace. So this is where this man was. He was in a place where healing was to be expected. And sometimes we like this impotent man are in the right place. But we are disappointed when we do not receive healing even if we're in the place where healing is to be expected. I've seen many persons, some who have been to many healing services, who have been in many prayer lines, and it looks like their healing still will not come. But this morning, I want to assure you, it doesn't matter how many services you've been in and did not get your healing. Don't run away in despair and disgust. Sooner or later, if you hang around the church, I assure you, that after a while, Jesus himself is going to show up. And when he shows up, whatever you need will be taken care of. Can you say amen? amen. Now, there are obstacles sometimes that are encountered. And we don't know all of the obstacles and the conditions that were working against the man in our text today. But there are two things, at least, that were obvious. First, the limited opportunities that were afforded him. And secondly, the lack of support when his opportunity came. This limited opportunity was even more critical in that after the angel troubled the waters, only one person, only one person, the first person, 
to enter the pool would be healed. It wasn't like everybody get in the pool. The first person in the pool is assured they're healing. No one else gets that assurance. If you're not first, you'd get nothing. Can you imagine if it were like that today? Here we are with about 40 people in here. And if the glory of God comes in and uh, can you imagine nobody being blessed but one person and the only way for you to be blessed is to have been the first person in line and I go back to when I came to the church this morning I wasn't as early as I normally am, and there were three people, and what do you think popped up in my line, uh, popped up in my mind? I wonder which one was the first one. <laughs> See, only if you were the first person in, in line. The truth is, some of us have never been first in anything. I got one amen over here. <laughs> Some of us are slow physically. We just don't move fast. Some are slow of understanding. <laughs> Some are slow to believe. I see it, but I ain't believing that. Some are slow to catch on. But it doesn't matter whether you are first or last. I'm here to tell you today. All you have to do is get in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This man, for 38 years, long, hard, difficult years, had been an invalid, impotent without the strength to support himself. And I believe that John recorded this situation to reassure us that it doesn't matter how long you have been in the shape that you're in. There is still hope for you. And I speak to those of you who are very sick in your body. No matter how long you've been in it, even when your loved ones have given up on you, God has not given up on you. This man had been sick for so long that nobody seemed to have been around with any concern for him or knowledge of him. But the thing about it is the longevity of his sickness was the very thing that caught the Lord's attention. And this brings me to my next point. This man had been sick for 38 years and 38 years he had seen healings within his grasp but it slipped away 
38 years, it seemed the angel troubled the water. But somehow, he could never get there in time. He could never be first. But I want to tell you something today. It doesn't matter how many people there are, that, how many people there are that need healing. It doesn't matter how many people need the deliverance from God today. You individually are the next person in line. Now, Jesus saw that the man had been there for a long time. He'd been in this condition for 38 years. He had seen his deliverance slip beyond his reach. For 38 years, the promise came, but he left. Disappointed. For 38 years, it looked like his day would never come. And although he was one in the midst of a place where there were five porches, it looked like when Jesus entered, he looked at porch one. He saw sick folk. And that's who I'm looking for. He came to porch two. He saw a lot of sad cases. But he says, that's not what I'm looking for. He came to porch three. Had a lot of people who needed a lot of help. But he said, that's not what I'm looking for. He moves on to porch four. And he still didn't find what he was looking for. But when he looked at porch five, he saw a man and he knew he had been there a long time. And it was the longevity of his suffering that appealed to Jesus. And I want you to know this morning, it doesn't matter how long you have been in trouble. It doesn't matter how long you have been sick doesn't matter how long you've been bound by unhappiness. It doesn't matter how long you've seemingly been shut out from all the blessings of God in your life. When Jesus saw him down on that porch and knew he had been a long time in that state, he asked a simple question, wilt thou be made whole? In other words, Jesus said, I know you've been sick, but do you want to get well? The man evidently was not too into what Jesus said. He was so into the fact that he was being ignored and left out and did not have any assistance until when his hope, Jesus, came. He still was speaking about his disappointments. You've got to understand that when the Lord tells you that he's ready to do something for you, don't let your disappointment speak out over your faith. 
The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus might have said to him, I didn't ask you for all your excuses. I simply want to know, are you ready to get well? Are you ready to be delivered? Jesus just spoke a word to him. Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. If you want to get well, you've got to, all you've got to do is to take up a leap of faith and do like Jesus said to his disciples. Launch out into the deep. Rise, get up, and walk. And I just want to say to you today, Somebody here today needs his deliverance. And if you really want to be healed, take a step of faith. And hear the Lord saying to you individually, rise, take up thy bed and walk. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, if you believe, these signs shall follow them that believe. In thy name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Believers shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. If you can believe this today, God is sending you a word. And that word is the same word that we've been speaking about in church for so long. In the name of Jesus, be healed, be delivered, be set free. As we leave here today, go tell somebody that you know, somebody that is in the need of healing from God. In the name of Jesus, be healed, be delivered, and be set free. When we will have done that, our song of praise will be hallelujah. We will praise God for our deliverance. Jesus wants to meet each of us at our pools. And when he meets us, our response must be hallelujah may that be the experience of each one of us is my prayer father we thank you for your great deliverance we thank you for the assurance that you are with us we thank you for the pool of deliverance that is there for each one of us. Give us the courage to make the step of being healed through your Holy Spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn is hymn 707.